So I used to be a believer when you talk about holistic health, that it was really just focused to your eating habits and make sure you got proper exercise. However, what I've come to learn that is much, much, much more than that. And as a matter of fact, according to a recent Harvard study, specifically about holistic wellness, it actually has six different pillars that are associated with a framework around your total holistic wellness. Emotional health, physical health, meaning and purpose, your character strengths, social connectedness, financial security. And what we're going to get into today is talking about the relevance of all six of those things. And we have a big surprise as to which ones of the things on that list are actually the most important ones. We had the, the pandemic happen, and out of that, we did see new insights and an elevated discussions about the importance of your mental capacity. So really starting to understand why when we look at our wellness or well-being, that we do need to take more of a holistic approach to making sure that we are fulfilled, satisfied, and, and performing at our best as we work our way through life. Based on that and what we know or have heard or have experienced in our life, what is your definition or what would you describe as a holistic well-being or holistic health? You know, when I hear the term holistic, and it's used quite <clears throat> a lot more frequently now than it's in the past, it, it makes me think of balanced. It makes me think of, you know, more to it than just what I was educated on. <clears throat> and it makes me think of, um, you know, what else is there that maybe I'm not putting effort to? Uh, obviously, you know, growing up, you hear things of eating healthy and uh, taking care of your body and exercising. And then I would say in, in the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years, uh, a lot of it's been around mental health. It's been around, you know, what are you doing to de-stress? And I would, I would always hear the, the phrase, you know, stress is the silent killer and, and all these other things. And then as I, you know, even go and talk to my own doctors, et cetera, you know, they're always wondering about my blood pressure and all these other variables and metrics that um, we use to gauge what uh, a healthy heart is and the healthy body is too. Um, one of the things that I've always acknowledged and had a really tough time accepting is around is that, that stillness and calmness, you know, calming my mind and whatnot. I, it's funny because as soon as Vinny opened his mouth, he said the word, I was actually mimicking his word. He said balance. So it was, uh, I think, uh, I was thinking about this earlier this morning when I woke up and I was in a, a dead dog's groggy state this morning. I was wondering if I could come out of it for this, for this session, because th this, the topic is such a powerful topic. And I honestly think a lot of folks um, shy away from it um, because of because of the implications and because of what it you know what it ultimately can promote you to do. And uh, this this idea of trying to have a balanced life has been something that I've been, I think, unconsciously for a number of years working on. But in the last, I think, five three to five years. I've really started to shift my focus in, in that direction. Um, it's common knowledge. I've been a gym guy my entire life. Uh, at least in the last 30 years, I've been a gym guy. And, um, but it's funny because I used to, ha it used to be, have to be on these certain terms that I could operate with this. And, and when I, when I say that is I used to be, I needed two hours, right? Well, based on the life that I'm living today, two hours is, is not feasible or sustainable on most, you know, in most time frames. So I've had to learn how to shift, adjust my mind and say, okay, sometimes it's just about touching, touching that part of the universe, you know, whether it's in getting an hour in and being somewhat emotionally satisfied with that. The fact that I made an effort, um, because what happens is, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later. I'm going to at least reference it. There's a part that in each of us that we really want to be, we want to be perfect. Um, there's no such thing as perfection. You know, it's, it's a, it's a constant point of achievement that you're trying to re you know, that you're trying to reach. And I think for some reason, the way society has us wound up, 
we have this idea like we have to, you know, it's either keeping up with the Joneses or or we see that ad that, you know, they're driving a brand new Mercedes and it's then and everybody's, you know, 100 percent in great shape and all this other kind of stuff. And it's just a setup for failure is what it really is. And you got to get in touch with at least I got to get in touch with what what serves me, what what feeds me, what makes me feel good um, on a very, on a balanced level. So um, it's really, a, it's like dancing in a minefield sometimes, you, you know, trying to really get through this and keep, and keep the train moving in a, in a positive direction. And, you know, I think, you know, we talk about things like kindness and grace for oneself um, and just learning how to be that way. Uh, learning how to be okay with it, um, being learning how to be okay with some of your imperfections while being perfect, perfect within those imperfections, because there's all this, there, there's different levels, and you gotta you know figure it out. You gotta get on a court. You know, for me, it's getting on a path, getting on a course um, to achievement. You know, to being able to do something that's um, always you know in the the the, the idea of. Hey, I'm just trying to do something positive. I'm just trying to do something that's that serves me. You know, we, I we, I talk about that all the time. Does it serve me? You know, how I live. Does it serve? Does it serve my overarching goals? And uh, and it's amazing because in this in at least in this calendar year, I've been moved. I've moved closer to. I've moved much more closer to that <clears throat> than I've ever been in my entire life. And it's pretty exciting. It, it, yeah. it excites me the idea, you know what I mean? I, I, it's, it's a reason to get up now. You know what I mean? It's like, what can I do? You know what I mean? How can I challenge myself on a very positive, uh, from a pr- positive methodology that I'm going to get the most out of me because I'm, you know, really start, you, as you get older, you should start to know who you are, you know what I mean? And, and acknowledge who you are more importantly, you know, we're, we're all unique in our own form, fit or fashion. And I'm starting to I'm starting to compare myself less to other people and compare myself more to myself, who I am. That's a big departure. That's a huge awakening for you. But now we hear this term mindfulness, right? And we hear that a lot in a lot of different ways. So events come to you first when you someone you know tosses that on the table and says, "Yes, I'm I'm, I'm more in this mindfulness state. You know, I'm trying to be very mindful about this or that." When you hear that, how does that resonate with you? Well, along with mindfulness, I feel the other word that tends to be added into the conversation is intention. And uh, between mindfulness and intention, for example, when you when you eat, you're being you have the intention of what you're doing, you're being present. Um, When you drink water, when you do all the the common daily habits that we we do to get by. You know, what is it that you're doing and why? Um, what is your intention? And, you know, that's something that I would say in the last five years, I've been mostly because the circles of friends and others that I surround myself now uh, also speak that language. And so, you know, noticing that the more I use that in my common f- daily phrases, um, and how I'm actually incorporating some of those concepts into my life are really important. So you're right. Mindfulness is prolific. Uh, I feel like so many products have mindful in it. Um, so many teachings and, uh, conversations and podcasts use the word mindful in it. And, um, <clears throat> the other word that kind of seems to connect with mindfulness is consciousness and i it's funny uh, i was i was listening to this audible book and um he's this revered medical doctor and psychologist and he was making a comment how recently um you know before if you use the c word which is consciousness uh, in, in psychotherapy and psychiatry and therapy, it was, it was kind of viewed as a woo woo thing. And then now it's all about consciousness and mindfulness and intention. Interesting how the 
psychodynamics of that have shifted in, in, in different ways. Chris, what about you, mindfulness? When that term is, is mentioned or brought out, what, what comes to mind? For me, understanding the effect I have on the people around me, uh, the life that I live or the life that I'm, a, that I'm living, Notice how I took, I was about to say the life I'm attempting to live and, and, and I removed that because it's the life that I'm living, you know, being, that. and that's part of being present. You know, I'm learning, these are tools I've, that I'm, I've, I've been introduced to me recently that I'm really practicing hard to use. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just like the, I, I was told a, a while back that I'm a leader. And I'd always said, I'm trying to be a leader. Reality is I am a leader. Why am I sugarcoating this? Why am I watering this down? Why am I in denial? I'm a leader. But you know, the reality is when you're a leader, there's responsibility. And in the case of this conversation we have, it's responsibility to, to life, responsibility to my life, responsibility to the people that are in my life and responsibility to the outcomes that I'm look that I desire and seek in the actions that I'm taking on a day to day basis and the, and the things that I'm involved with, with the job, with the, you know, as a teach, as a teacher, actually, I was talking about this last night. I don't think I'm necessarily a teacher. I think I'm a moderator. I'm someone that's disseminating information, sharing knowledge and pushing it forward into younger minds. So there's a certain responsibility that I, that I bear. And I don't, I, I mean, you guys know me very well. I don't, it's, I, I don't, it's not a cavalier approach. You know, I don't look at it from like, I'm the authority. I am an authority, but I'm not the authority. So there's, there's a, there's a huge difference in that. And a lot of people get, I think a lot of people get hung up in that and it becomes an ego thing. This is not about my ego. This is about me trying to leave something better than I found it. Me trying to be a, 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 a participating contributor in life, in my life and your lives and the people that, lives I touch. So there's, I think it all plays a part and it's obviously from the neck up, right? These are, this is, that's part of that intentional thing for me. I'm, I'm waking up and I'm intentionally saying, what, what do I want? What kind of uh, positivity, what kind of a change do I want to affect on, this, on the, you know, I talk in terms of, you know, you guys who read my posts, I talk in terms of my little universe and the universe at large and things of that nature. And, it, and if you're listening to the between the lines of those words, I'm, I'm really trying to say that I'm a part of something that's bigger than me. And I'm happy to be here for starters. I mean, you don't know how lucky we are to be in the positions that we're in. You know, I've been in this gratitude mode for a while, too, where I'm like, I have to thank God that I'm in the position I am, that I've been put in the position I'm in, because it could be different. It, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to think about what that difference could be, because I really don't want to go there. But I'm so happy that I'm where I am, and I'm being given the opportunities I'm being being given. This is a, this is a, we talked, I said that earlier about the departure. This is a huge departure from the old Chris. You know what I mean? It's just, I took so much for granted. You know what I mean? That people would get behind me, that we would find success and all this stuff. I was just like, ah, if I just roll the ball out, it'll just happen. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like, well, what are you going to, what kind of work are you going to do in the lab when nobody's watching to make these things happen, to bring your desires to into the light? It just requires a bit of calmness. You know, a bit of practicalness, a little bit of rolling up your sleeves, a little bit of hard work, good old fashioned hard work and being it positively intentional. That's really what it is for me. It's, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm doing. Let me stop saying the try part. It's what I'm doing, you know. So uh, I, I don't know if you can tell I'm wait, I'm finally the coffee, I guess, is kicking in because I'm waking up. But uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for each day, I may not go into the day excited, but typically I get excited at some point in the day about the things that I'm that I'm involved in, and I keep pinching myself, saying like, "This was not my plan. <laughs> I did not have this. Whole, the plan I had was totally different." And that's 
that's somebody else's work that's on a whole higher plane than I'm on. But I'm happy that it's happening. Absolutely. Uh, Chris, thanks for sharing that. I want to go back to something that you you brought up earlier, Chris, and you were talking about um, perfection or trying to be a perfectionist or perfectionism. We do get caught up in that. One of the things that was talked about in this article, the counter that they placed to uh, perfectionism was developing your adaptability. And I thought that that was very, very interesting how they chose that word as the counter to perfectionism. But that's the one thing that they really said you need to start to get more comfortable with is just being more adaptable, being more pliable, you know, uh, allowing yourself to be able to flex in and out and, and kind of bob and weave and not be so stiff, you know, with that whole perfectionist piece. I, I think that's a key part, especially for your emotional health piece of it. And then obviously the, the physical health piece is the stress that it can cause, right? From trying to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. So adaptability is, I think, a key component. But where I wanted to go back to from there is something that came up and both you guys open with that word, and that is balance. Because I think, you know, when you think holistically and you think holistic well-being, we, we want to seek balance. I actually take a, a little bit of a different philosophy from that myself. And I've all I've started about two years ago to replace that word balance with harmony, trying to find a harmonious place. And the reason for that is when you talk about balance, that literally is a razor's edge because the only way something can be balanced is it has to be proportionally equal on, on either side, right? And in, in most ways, that's unrealistic. You may get it there, but then the stress of trying to keep it in that perfectly balanced state, it's like a seesaw, yeah? How do you get it to where it stops just like this and then doesn't tilt this way or tilt that way, right? So I've started to look at it from what are the things I need to do within my life to get things to just be more harmonious? Well, not necessarily balanced, but I am flowing. I'm having this adaptability that I just talked about, I'm not being as rigid. And that allows me to try to keep things more in harmony, almost like a sheet of music, right? Sometimes the notes move up or down and you got highs and lows. And that is what it takes to kind of have that harmony all blend together. What are your thoughts? Is that something that you guys can get behind? Or do you feel the objective should truly still be balanced? You know, I, I, I hear what you're saying because life is a dance life is it's it's a it's a highs and lows and the ability for me to recognize where i'm at recognize when i'm not in balance and and <clears throat> you're right it's not really balanced there's there's like another word i don't know harmonious also has that kind of different kind of connotation to me maybe it's just feeling valued and feeling like I'm on a path and, and knowing that it, it'll all work out. And, and that's the piece where, when we talk about gratitude for me, it's looking back and saying, wow, I'm really grateful for all these things that typically I would take for granted. And then there's the other side, which is, you know, the, okay, where am I going? Um, what do I want? What does my subconscious need? Uh, and I feel like that's that, you know, resiliency is the other word that kind of comes to mind in this. It's the ability for me to switch out of, let's just say negative thoughts. It's the ability for me to, um, you know, roll with the punches. Uh, it's the ability for me to, uh, feel like I belong and that I have a close circle of friends who've got my back, uh, feeling like I'm not alone. And that particular one, the feeling like I'm not alone piece has been my limiting belief for so long, most of my upbringing, et cetera, you know, um, and that's been a really big challenge for me. You know, it's been the, the, the one that kind of keeps me in my programming and the one that um, I've been working on for so long to attain that harmonious state. 
So let me ask a follow-up question, Vince. You mentioned right there at the end about that limiting belief. How has that manifested itself in your day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month behaviors? What, what, how has that shown up? You know, you, you, I, I get these kind of like feelings of, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's loneliness or abandonment is the other way of looking at that too. Um, for me, it's uh, filling my time with, you know, know, could be anything from doom scrolling on social media to binge watching shows or, you know, doing things that uh, I don't necessarily want to do. I feel like I need to do for some unexplainable reason, maybe. It's, it's filling my time with stuff. And, and that stuff is not with intention. So for me, how I get through that, uh, I've noticed, is I reach out to mentors. They've been amazing kind of guides and, um, and they realign my energy. And that's where, you know, noticing and being aware of where my energy is and those little kind of uh, chatter in the back of your brain, you know, it's the typical, uh, you've got the two little uh, good, good and bad, <clears throat> whichever one's talking to you in your subconscious uh, and driving you to do things that you acknowledge may not be good for you or not adding value to my life. Um, and then, and then it's that switching. Like, how do you, how do you switch out of that mindset? How do you, move forward and um, achieve and feel like I belong. Interesting. I asked that question for a very specific reason, because we are kindred spirits in that limiting belief and, and that particular part of our mindset. So that's been a challenge for me as well. The exact same thing of, you know, feeling like um, nobody cares or it's just me or I'm all alone. So I wanted to ask how it manifests itself for you. And it, from your description, it sounds like there's a lot of quote unquote distraction. And we'll just use a, as a, as a summary word, you find ways to distract yourself. Uh, for me, it, what it's done is, um, I take on this, I'll just do it myself yeah. attitude mentality. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and not being willing to, um, let others in to help or even more importantly, ask yeah. for that help, right? Uh, and, and that has its own detriment. So that, that, is, that is part of, as we were talking about, how we even got into this, this part of this was talking about, you know, finding that balance. How do we, you know, better manifest that for ourselves in our lives by having, being more open, being willing to ask for help? Uh, and as you said, you, you reach out to your mentors and try to, you know, recenter yourself right so that you continue to move forward but the most important piece of that is i think as you discuss and same thing for me is that realization and acceptance of where that's coming from and now you can make an attempt to do something about it right and you know one of the sayings that i've heard before and i'm using a lot more in my kind of daily weekly is you know to your point, how can you trust others if you cannot trust yourself? And so, like, you know, you hear this a lot in, in, in a lot of, uh, uh, let's just say, biblical or sagely wisdom, you know, the answers within you. Um, and, and one, my ability to feel more comfortable in my skin and trust myself mm-hmm. and all those things that, uh, that um, equate to internal balance is how I and others are able to have deeper connections, uh, feel that, um, because we're social beings, like we inherently biologically, uh, we're never designed to be alone. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to have that, um, connection and that, um, you know, We've got a tribe or tribes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely true. And trust, you touched on that. And uh, I had a, I did a, a post this week. It was something that, to Simon Sinek, who's one of the people that I, I like his optimism and his approach to a lot of things. 
And he talks specifically about that in the post basically read, um, we don't build trust by offering help. We build trust by asking for it. And that was like a slap in the face, but in a good way, because it really was like, whoa, wait, let me think what, right? Because we most times look at that 180 degrees of what that statement says. But when you really think about it, that is the best way to build trust is by asking for help because you are connecting with that other individual and trusting them, believing, showing them that you value them by having them help you, right? So it, it, it automatically starts to build a whole different level of trust and communication. But we tend to look at it the opposite or maybe not so much look at it, but our behaviors tend to trend 100% the opposite of that. So I thought that was very fascinating, his approach to how we should actually go about trying to build trust. Chris, what are your thoughts on what we've been talking about here recently? I honestly, as I, I thought about, as I listened to both of you guys talk, the first part was the fact that I, I like the I like the analogy, the definition that you came up with is about how holding balance is, is it's a delicate dance because you got to like literally, you know, have it perfectly, you know, whatever it is lined up in, in this position. Uh, I immediately went to, I flipped over to the harmony stand, which is, you know, we're looking to be in, in harmony. Well, the other thing for me is it's rhythm. You know, I know you guys have heard me talk about like, cause we, obviously we all play golf together and we do a lot of stuff together. And I always talk about trying to find my rhythm on the golf course. And if I can find it, I have a better chance of succeeding on that, on, on that particular day or, or outing or action, as I like to say that I'm attempting to do. So it's always about, I'm always in search. Of, and, and the, here's the, the crazy part rhythm. There's an emotional, a, a mental and emotional rhythm that I'm trying to achieve just as much as a physical rhythm. And for me, it's, it's seeing if I can marry them up, if I can get them to come together and, and, and almost to, you know, as a, you know, to band together to, you know, for this, this action that I'm trying to do. And it's important. Um, I have gotten to the, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I don't, even when it's tough to find it initially, I'm not allowing that to slow me down. I'm not allowing that to pollute my experience. I'm not allowing that to put me in a bad frame of mind. I'm telling myself, regardless of the, the score, the quote unquote outcome, it's still going to be good. There's going to be some other lesson that I'm going to, you know, if it, let's just say the score doesn't come out the way that I'd like to see it come out. There is still something good that's going to come out of this. There's going to be something I'm going to learn about the situation or myself or the people that I'm, that I'm involved with at the particular time. It's for me, it's a, it's another avenue to discovery. So I'm on this, like I said, I, you guys, you guys are with me in the trenches every day. You talk to me almost daily, you know, what you know, where I'm at, you know, what, you know, some of my goals are, you know, what I'm trying to achieve, whether I verbally tell you or not, you can see it, you know, it's very evident because, you know, you know, I'm kind of, I'm at that point where I'm really, I am trying to be it, see, see it, be it, live it. That's my, you know, that's my new one. See it, be it, live it. And I'm trying to stay in those moments as much as humanly possible. Um, as long as it doesn't affect, you know, doesn't, I don't, re, I don't pressurize myself to the point where it's to my detriment. No, I like the rhythm. Rhythm is, 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 is a great analogy for it too. And more importantly, I think as human beings, we become more effective in life whatever our mission is to be a better friend, to be a better parent, to be a better coworker, you know, to be a better support system to, you know what I mean? To all, I mean, any, you can, you can tag it to almost any act like any life's action. The goal is to make it, make it better, make you better, make it better. And I think that's, you know, that's my, you know, those are some of my reasons for getting up every day. You know, can I make it better? Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the short answer is yes. 
Now, what what degree that is, we need that that is yet to be determined. But the answer, typically for me, is going to be yes. I know my abilities, and I know what I want to do, and I know what I can do. I'm very in touch with my mortality and my human side. I'm not Superman. Can I occasionally do some super things? Absolutely. And those are the moments I live for. You don't get them every day, but the reality is they will come through the repetition of life and the intention of life and what you're manifesting and what you want. You know, if you, you know, I pray, I prayed this morning when I got up, I got, I got two or three things that are on my hot list. And I'm, you know, what I'm, one of the things I'm learning is, yeah, I share with you guys a lot of stuff, but there's some stuff I'm just like, I'm keeping it close to, to, to the vest for me because it serves me better to keep it close to the vest at this particular time. Because otherwise I'm just, pre, I'm just giving lip service. You know, I'm done, done talk, 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 talk. I can talk, I can talk all day. I can talk all freaking day. That's not the point. That's not the point. <laughs> My point is that sometimes we have to turn these good things inwardly and ask yourself the question, what do you want? What, you know, I learned that through the seminars. What do I want? And what am I going to do to go after it? What am I going to do to, you know, part of that is I'm going to have to be vulnerable. <laughs> you know, I'm still, I'm still working on that, <laughs> but uh, I know that it is a, it is, it is what, you know, uh, it is one of my Achilles is being vulnerable hmm. because I still haven't fully committed to failing forward. I, I just have, I'm, I, but I'm, 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 I'm getting there. I'm doing it. And that's what's important. It's, it is the, the, as they say, sometimes it's just a matter of leaning towards it. It might not even be a step, but you're leaning in that direction. And that's what matters, right? Creates, creates a positive momentum. But it doesn't have to be light speed, but the fact that you're moving is, is, is what matters. So I want to go back to the Harvard study then. Um, and, you know, we talked about the, what they're calling the, the six domains or six pillars of holistic well-being. Uh, emotional health, physical health, meaning and purpose, your character strengths, social connectedness, financial security. So those are the six things. Of those six things, surprisingly enough, what they ranked as the top two really surprised me um, because you look at that list and obviously you obviously think, well, health is always important because nothing matters if you're not here anymore for you, right? Uh, so it's important. But what can you do to best maintain your health is, I think, what their approach was. And so the top two things were actually meaning slash purpose and social connectedness, which was a surprise when you really think about everything that's on that list. So knowing that, how does that change your thought, your perspective? Um, would you agree? Would you disagree? Do you have questions on, wow, how did they get there? Regarding those two things really being the bedrock of your holistic well-being. Vince, I'll come to you first. Hmm. Well, clearly, of all six pillars, they're all very important. Uh, I would also concur that that surprises me initially. Um, and then it also makes sense. You know, that, that meaning and purpose, uh, it, for me, always comes down to feeling valued. Mm. What, there's a statement that uh, in Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, you know, uh, adds value, uh, is appreciated and acknowledged. And I, when I read that, I was like, wow, it's really fascinating. And I, I printed it off, I put it on the bottom of my screen. So I would look at it every day. <clears throat> so whatever I was doing, as long as I had one of those or all of those, I'm like, okay, I'm adding value. I'm getting acknowledged or I'm appreciating others. Hey, Thanks so much for doing that. Like, I really appreciated that, you know, and just giving something. So it's, you're always doing that. And then on the meaning and purpose, I mean, I feel like that's just, you know, that's, that's, that's why we, we as social beings are always attracted to, um, you know, why are we here? Um, what is our impact going to be? And then as we age, it's like, what is our legacy? And how will we be remembered? Will we be remembered? Um, 
And, and that one, especially as I kind of move into my, you know, next part of my chapter, uh, evolutionary, it's, it's much more, you know, when you, when you become a parent, it's not about you, it's about them. Um, when you, or when I, you know, think about, um, you know, am I, am I, am I doing a good job for those around me in my work life, my work culture? Am I being a supportive friend um, or, or partner in my personal culture? And um, I would say on the meaning and purpose, you know, again, as a, as a parent, it's like my ability to support them and, and their life and prepare them for success or whatever comes down to, you know, being there for them. You know, it evolves from a parent into more of a, you know, I would say mentor would be the closest word or, or it's like a facilitator. You know, Chris mentioned, mentioned this in, in kind of what he's doing as a coach or a, not an instructor. <clears throat> what was the word you said, Chris? Moderator. Moderator. Yeah. I feel like you're more of a facilitator. It's like, okay, you see all this, you have a higher level and you're just, you're building that, you're telling stories. So I love to tell stories of like, Hey, here's my experiences and here's what worked and what didn't work. And hopefully in the sense of, you know, not passing judgment to my kids or others, it's just saying, you know, this is, this is what went on and, um, and being okay for them to figure stuff out. And then on the other side, you know, that circle of friends thing, uh, I, I almost feel like that is equally as important, if not more important, because what was the, what was the term? I think there's a book. It's like, you are who, uh, was it like the five friends you keep in your inner circle or something like that? Do you remember that? And um, that's something where also as a parent, you're looking at it and saying, you know, what is the type of uh, values or individuals that, you know, my kids or myself are keeping close to the chest? Uh, what do they value? Because they're, they're also a mirror a reflection of of uh, what they're thinking and feeling. <clears throat> and so that's something yeah. that I, I would say appreciated most throughout my upbringing and you know, my ability to kind of make friends in different cultures and circles. And then also that's been also a challenge too. It's like, well, who am I? What are my values? Um, what do I want? And I've, I've taken a lot harder look at that because when I look at the data and I look at you know, I, I empathize with individuals who have gone through very extreme upbringings or challenging situations. You know, we, we talk about them as the most, you know, marginalized communities, you know, socially, economically disadvantaged communities. And I think about, you know, their, their culture and their family, you know, we're all, we're all achieving or we're all maintaining the same level of thing. It's like, you know, um, who's got my back and um, what are the things we value in terms of what do we do together? Um, and, and you, ha one has to, or at least I have to say, you know, they're right, uh, and wrong at the same time, you know, they're right because it's value, it, they, they value it and society may look at it and say that is wrong or, and so for me, it always comes back to whatever it is I'm doing, it must follow the golden rule, you know, as long as it centers in love and, and kindness mm -hmm and gratitude, like what's on your wall. You know, I feel like it's a good positive energy when it's negative or, you know, extractive or toxic or any of these things that how you can define that uh, it is not something that fills my cup. Agree with you 100% on that. Um, I want to come back to something of and then I'll come to you, Chris, about this, because I think it's very interesting. Something I, that we lose, I think, as we mature and we, we, you know, go through life and teens and then start adulting and all these different things, because we talk about here the, the, the social connectedness and the meaning of the purpose. And as a young child, um, it, it, 
that is really what life is almost all about. So, and let me give you an example. If I take a soccer ball and I take four or five seven-year-olds and I take it and I get take the soccer ball and I toss it outside and say, hey, you guys go play. Uh, race, creed, color, social background, economics, financial status of those kids is totally irrelevant to those children. They got a soccer ball, they got friends, they're going to go play, right? 100%. But somehow, as we evolve, we kind of lose touch with that foundational piece that we used to have when we were younger. And I think this is in some ways what that's referring to is remembering that that piece that we had as we were young and, and coming up is still relevant, even as we get older and as we go through life. And that was one of the parallels that I kind of drew from it all uh, as I was looking at. It. I think that's a very relevant piece for me anyway, uh, as far as looking at that. So trying to stay in touch with that side of you and and because it, it's in there it's just we've buried it and hit it or moved it or shifted it or you know the whole who moved my cheese thing but figuring out where that is within you and continuing to nurture and feed and make sure that that's part of who you are and how you behave day to day i think is, is a very important piece so. i actually agree so that so that so just remind me again so another one of it was um one one is basically your meaning or purpose in life, and then the other one is social connectedness. Truthfully, huge. For huge, I that has so much come to play for me now. Um, I think I, I mentioned this. I know uh, I don't know what podcast I talked about this. Is that there was a time when I was just kind of letting life happen, and now I'm like, oh no no no. I've got to, I've got to contribute. I've got to, you know, try to try to put some semblance of a plan on the table um, with regards to how I want my life to play out. I understand you can't, you can't plan every step and action in your life. Um, some things are going to just happen, but the reality was I was just, you know, I guess I took it for granted that good things would happen for me. You know, if I just woke up, and that's not the case. You have to literally participate in your own life. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, one of my mantras is leaving it better than I found it. Um, I was talking about this last line. I've talked about it a gazillion times, how where I am at this particular this year is not where I had planned on being. But apparently I put some things out to the universe and the universe heard me and the universe said, Oh, no, 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 not that way. You're going to go this way. And I initially, obviously, as most human beings, I questioned it. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said I wanted, that's what I said I wanted. But I guess every, my body language, every other thought that I had was saying, no, 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 no. You want to go over here. And there was a, there was a period where I was, I had to get into an, ex, an acceptance stage where it's like, careful what you pray for young man because whether you were actively praying for it verbally you were praying for it in your head and the universe heard you and now it has delivered and now you're there make the most of it you know what i mean you these are golden you know I, and i think people as a whole we we fail at that sometimes we are so hell bent on what we think you know we want and a lot of that is it's uh it's surface level you know, it's for the optics. You know, I want to be this. I want to be that. Well, no, that's not what you really want. And so I guess what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to work my way around to is what I'm doing now gives me purpose. I thought about this when Vinny was talking. Um, my facilitating is not going to facilitate my retirement. Let's put it, let's put it on that level. But I'm telling you, I'm so rich in other areas now, I can make up for it on the other side because I'm getting this piece that's this there were where there was this hole before, it is literally becoming filled in with all this wonderful stuff that I'm doing. And it is allowing me to fuel the side that needs to get me paid. <laughs> Just, let's say it, let's put it on that level. So I'm like. And it's a delicate, don't get me wrong. It's a delicate dance. And right now I'm, because it's so, both 
pieces are still so new for me. I have my, my internal struggles from time to time. Um, and that's where the part where I've got to really kind of check in with myself and, you know, have conversations with you guys and just explore a little bit and find, trying to f- keep working on the harmonious side of all of this, which is to bring them together and not necessarily to balance them, but to put them in harmony of each other, if that makes sense. And then as far as the social side of this thing, uh, I think that's what started it for me um, at the end of the last year when, or come, you know, coming out of the whole COVID thing and, and just trying to move forward. And I, it took a long, I think it took a long time for a lot of people to move, to really kind of move past all of that, whether they were admitting it or not. It took me a hell of a long time to, to start to move past that. But I realized at the end of last year, you know, as a, a single entity entrepreneur, that I was, I was, I was so unfulfilled, you know, being that one man shop, you know, you know, I still work out of my, obviously I still work, you know, we, a lot of us work out of our homes, but we're still in team environments. So we have to work with other folks, but I also realized just like last night, us going to, uh, to Gatsby for two, three hours. I needed that. I mean, it was so beneficial to go, interact with some people I've never interacted with. You know, that was the goal for me yesterday was to go talk to some people I had never talked to in my life before, you know, and I might sound crazy. Like, why would you want to do that? Um, Because it feeds me um, because it validates me um, because it allows me to contribute the things that are important to me, contributions, you know, making a difference, being validated, uh, having people acknowledge me, you know, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I am a, I am one of the, I am a, part of a smart group of people in a particular room. So getting a chance to show that off from time to time, it doesn't happen. It doesn't have to happen every day, every week, but the chance that you get to do that from time to time and literally exhale some of your thoughts, some of your beliefs, you know, some of your goals, some of your wishes, some of your desires. um, I think that's all important. And I think when we minimize that, which I think some people do that from time to time, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. I think that's all important. And, you know, the the, the social connectedness piece is, I think, very important because as Vince alluded to earlier, we are social beings. You know, we, we need that piece to, you know, make us feel whole and to feel connected and to feel valued and to feel cared for and everything else. Um, and, you know, Chris, as you were just sharing, how, how that, allowed you to feel like you contributed and you gave back and you were engaged and then all of that feeling last night and, and talking with people. And I do think that's all of value uh, and of high value in our, as we're using the term today, holistic well-being. Uh, I want to get back to one other thing that kind of came up in there and we didn't use the word itself, but we did talk about when we were talking about meaning or purpose and I really wanted to back up just a little bit and talk about the why. And it goes back, Chris, to what you were saying about subconsciously what it was that you were asking for. And what's interesting is a lot of the times, and this can happen, you are asking for a certain thing based on a why that you're telling yourself that this is the why. So subconsciously, what you're actually putting out is based on the true why and not the why that you have created for yourself, if that makes sense. So sometimes it brings to us opportunity and things that you go, wait, that's not what I asked for. Well, consciously, no, it's not. But subconsciously, because there is sometimes these things ticking within us that drive us in different ways. So I think it's very important that we try to get in touch with what is the difference between that inner voice of conscious voice and that inner voice of subconscious voice and how sometimes those things may be in unison and other times they may be trying to take you in two different directions and trying to reconcile that uh, because the subconscious has, does have a lot of power. Uh, and it's a very important piece of, I think, the mindfulness and purpose piece of your, your, your wholeness and, and your well-being. So, Vince, I want to come back to you on a question because another thing that came up uh, earlier in your discussion, you were talking about gratitude, feeling valued, wanting others to feel valued. I would say over the last three to six months, I've started to, whenever I encounter someone who does something, it could be as simple as the cashier at the grocery store taking an extra step to do something, you normally say thank you, right? 
but I have also started to just add, and it's really become just a automatic reflex now, and say, I appreciate you, right? Uh, and that has garnered so much um, comfort in myself because I'm expressing that, you know, not just thinking it, but actually saying it. And then sometimes the reaction that you get is, is it, can, it can be mind blowing because people don't hear that enough. I think that they're appreciated, right? Yeah. Because uh, I've had people react say, well, uh, "Thank you," and that 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 brought a real, you know, sunshine to my day because it's been a rough day, you know. Just you say, "Hey, I appreciate you," it makes such a difference. So I've really been, I think. Initially, I was focused to try to do it, and now it's just become this automatic reaction. What are your thoughts on that, Vince? Is that relevant? Can that really make a difference out there by not only showing but voicing your appreciation to others? Yeah, I, 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 I also appreciate that you appreciate that I share that appreciation as well to others. I use those words as well, and and maybe it's just because the word thank you is used prolifically. Um, you know, I would say growing up, I was definitely uh, one of those individuals because I'm an avoidant attachment style. So, you know, confrontation, all those things. So prolifically either apologizing, you know, or whatnot was something that I was like, oh, this is maybe it's a cultural thing or an upbringing thing. And then recognizing that, no, I, I do not need to apologize for things that I you know, whatever. It's like, you're not in the wrong. <clears throat> and in the same tone, showing that appreciation to someone for the the gesture, you know, it, it, it you know, it's been building to this phrase or this, this concept around unconditional, you know, and, and with unconditional also adds on authenticity. So it's like, well, why are you doing this? What is it that you're doing? Are you doing it for, you know, uh, gain? Are you doing it for like a quid pro quo? Like, what is it that you're doing to, uh, either for yourself or to others that uh, you want back? And there's, you know, there, in a lot of the consciousness mindful community, it's that phrase of unconditional love. And I feel like that is also centered with gratitude, where you are, of course, kind to yourself and grateful for yourself of all the things that you have done. You are seeing others around you and you're, you're appreciating those things. And one of the things that I would say in the last year that's even more, more fascinating is I found more gratitude and more appreciation in watching how others show up as a reflection of myself. This is the whole, you know, man in the mirror kind of thing, you know, and it's so fascinating because, you know, once you see it, once you feel it, once you recognize it, you'll, you'll never, you'll never go back because there's this an awareness function. And so I've had so many now friends that I'm like, Oh, I, I love you. Like, I appreciate you. <laughs> And seeing what they're doing and how they're doing it and what they're saying and what they're not saying and their body language, it's, uh, it's really fascinating to me. And, you know, it, it's like I, I, have nothing, uh, I have nothing other than to say thank you for showing me how I'm showing up. Thank you for, you know, uh, providing the spotlight into my subconscious. You know, because I, I feel like we're all pretty, I would say, intelligent individuals, you know, on the consciousness side, where we're moving towards a self-awareness, we're reading the stuff, we're listening to podcasts, we're having this, you know, conversation. And yet, as you said, it's looking at what's inside your subconscious and that programming. And that's that's been the biggest challenge for me. You know, I hear it, I see it. I want it, and yet, how am I able to really, I would say, rewrite that? And that's interesting that what you were sharing there is, you know, how you're showing up is actually being reflected back to you in their behavior. And that's very fascinating. That's a very fascinating thing. Chris, what about you? What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it all starts with a conscious decision, for, for starters. 
Um, we are, I thought about this, <laughs> it's funny how you would say this, I thought about this yesterday um, and the day before and the day before that. Um, what is your, what's, what's your effect? What is your, you know, conscious or unconscious effect on your surroundings, the people that are, that come in and out of your universe, the people that are there on a day in and day out basis? I'll give you an example, it's silly as hell, but it is, is a microcosm of, of, of how humans think sometimes. Or at least how this human thinks. Okay, I can't, I, can't, I can't tell you about everybody, but I can tell you about me. Okay, um, I've got a, there's a young lady in my building, right? You know, you guys know where I live at, and she's a local girl, lifted truck, the whole the whole freaking nine, and she works across the street, right? For some reason, you guys been to my place? She parked. Matter of fact, you probably have seen the truck. She parks her truck right in front of the fire hydrant, like on a daily basis. And I found myself a while a, a while back being so negative behind that. Like, who is she and how does she have this right to do this? And how come I can't do this? The whole freaking nine. I found myself wound up in that. And I'm like, and all of a sudden the light came on a few days ago and I'm like, why do I care? I mean, why do I care? Yeah. This is yeah. not about me and her. She's doing her thing and I'm doing my thing. The reality is, is I don't want to park my damn truck out there in front of the fire hydrant any damn way. Why, why do I, you know what I mean? And I, this is the, this is the human frailty at, 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 at play at work where you get so wrapped up in somebody else's stuff. Mm. You don't can f- focus on your own stuff. So the energy I'm putting towards why is she getting, why is she allow is allowed to do that? Or more importantly, why she's, she gets away with that is of no concern to me, but for some reason, I, the way we're wired and where we, where most humans are predispositioned, that becomes something. It becomes this thing we carry around. And I, a couple of days ago, I was like, I don't care. I finally, I finally reached that point. I was like, Chris, stop caring. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect your life. All it, it, you're allowing it to affect your life right now. So let's cut it out. And she's a nice girl. I speak to her all the time, you know, cause I'm, that's my other thing is I'm trying to speak to people and I like in my building, I've been living around these people forever speak to them, say hi, at least just say hi. You know, you, you don't have to engage and have some long winded conversation, but at least speak. It's, it's a common human courtesy. Speak. Just like you said, I appreciate you say hello. I've had, but the funny, the crazy part is I've had some amazing conversations with some of my neighbors just out of hello. You know, they'll, they'll ask a, a, an open-ended thought provoking question, usually something positive. If it turns out to something negative, I typically shut it down because I just, I don't, you know, I'm trying to keep my thoughts in a positive frame of mind because I know where I can go if you put me on the other side of the fence. But just things along, you know, along those lines, it's waking up, being intentional um, and wanting to, I truly want to have a positive effect every day I get up, in, even if it's for five minutes, because it, it literally affects me. You know, if I'm, if I don't live in a world of where I'm trying to create positive energy and positive flow and good vibes, not fun at all. Not fun. I'm in challenging times right now and, and it, and it's all for the good. So recognizing that and being able to really get on board with that. I think that's a lot of folks is challenging. It's it's funny, Chris, because you've, we've talked about this truck. (laughs) <laughs> at least a handful of times and i'm like and i think about them like what what like you're wasting your breath you're wasting your energy on this one and then and then i'm like okay you know uh and i wanted to to bring something up because it's it's definitely something connected to the company you keep it's like when you when you surround yourself with individuals who are always you know speaking ill of others or, or, you know, it's, <clears throat> again, it's like, well, uh, it's easier for me to talk, you know, crap about other people and then not look at myself. And that really is an interesting kind of telltale of where one is in their journey. 
you know, what is it that the energy that they're holding on to, you know, is it one of like, you know, supporting like, hey, you know, because when you read books about like, um, oh, remember Chicken Soup for the Soul? You know, and you and you always hear about that. And then one of the key takeaways from all of that uh, is like, well, you know, you don't, you don't know what the other person is going through. You know, may, maybe <clears throat> you were to find out that um, they, uh, they're a caregiver for an elderly person and having the truck there is easier because they need ADA access. Well, I don't know. I'm just thinking all these things up. Like there's no, and, and again, it's like, well, you know, maybe you should ask, hey, like, you know, how can I support you? Like, what is it that you're doing? Because you never know what's going on in that individual's world. And for us to just judge and, you know, that whole, that prejudgment piece, uh, I feel like that's really core to uh, a lot of the challenges we have in our culture, you know, just, just talking smack and just being negative and all that stuff. Well, you, I mean, let me, if you don't mind me jumping in, um, that's part of our, that's part of my upbringing. You know, I watched my mother judge. My mother's faint. She was, if there was a TV show today and my mother were alive, she could be on that TV show being the judge because she was famous for, and I learned that from her. Well, I'm trying to, I'm undoing that. The fact that we're talking about it today tells you that I'm, my goal is to undo that, to acknowledge that this is a piece that has been in me for, I don't know how long, I mean, forever. Um, and I don't want to be that person. I'm not going to be that person. So that's, you know, that's the first time I kind of, I mean, I think, yeah, I've shared it with you. It was probably just more out of jest and uh, conversation filler. You know, that I think sometimes that's what happens also is we, we conversate, we want a conversation fill. So the first thing that comes up is something negative as opposed to something positive. Hey, this great thing happened today. You know, I want to share it, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, we go to the crap. Hey, this crap just happened over here. And do you know about that or something? You know what I mean? And it's just, what's the purpose? It's, you know, it, 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 it wastes your time, it wastes your life. You know, we, I don't know how much time I got and I need to put my mind and my focus on the things that create positive outcomes create unity, you know, create support. That's the stuff that I want, that I, that I am at my core. Let it rise. Let it come to the forefront. Be all you can be. Yeah. See it, be it, live it. In, in the army? <laughs> in the army, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, but uh, Yeah. Yeah. So let me go back to this because you're right. And you talk about where learned behaviors, right? So you're talking about, you know, you saw that in your mom, the judgment. And so, you know, that, that's what you saw. And Vince kind of alluded to this earlier. We were talking about, you know, that's that circle of five. And I think that what they say in that, and I, this is not verbatim, but basically you are the sum of those five people that you, you know, your inner circle or whatever term you want to look at that based on whatever that energy looks like within that group, right? Because that's, we evolve into that type of space, right? And then that, that's how we work as humans in most times. So maybe it's time to change the circle. Uh, sometimes maybe it's just you identifying, maybe I don't need to change the circle, but I need to have filters and boundaries that I set for myself within that circle, right? Uh, that's a piece of it. Vince, I want to thank you for the segue because you brought me right to the last thing I really want to talk about today. And I think this is very important when we talk about our holistic well-being. And we were talking about uh, relationships in general, just, you know, and interacting, relating with others. And we also had a brief discussion there about how we are showing appreciation and how that's being reflected back to us, et cetera. So the word I'm going to use is responsibility. And I'm asking this question. Do you feel that it is our slash your slash my individual responsibility to help or make a difference in other people's lives? Is that a responsibility or is it just a choice or is it just yeah, it's a nice to have? What are your thoughts? Is, is it a responsibility for us? And let me let me ask a, a, a further question in on that one. Sure. Is 
when you say responsibility, it's it's an obligation. Is that what you say? Responsibility. The other word I wrote down is whole space. So should we hold space in our lives for others to uh, consciously make a make an attempt, put the, put put forth the effort to make a difference? Hmm. Well, um, being that we just talked about the need for meaning and value and connection. Uh, I, I feel like the answer is yes, because they go together. And, um, you know, it's interesting uh, when I, I think about, you know, a lot of my conversations with close friends or just anyone, really. It's like holding space for them, uh, just being there with them. Um, you know, and one of the, the tools that I have been or the muscles that I've been working through is, is around acts of service, the whole unconditional giving, unconditional love, because as the phrase, we all know it, the more you give, the more you receive. And, and that's really fascinating because so much of how I was raised was, was in that culture of like, okay, you know, uh, I give with the expectation that you will do something for me, the whole quid pro quo. <clears throat> Um, Asian culture is, is it's very prolific in that whole idea. I guess any culture, really. You know, it's it's uh, it, it's like a trust thing. There's like a trust factor, where and then and then the other thing is like, well, how authentic is that? And um, in my book, it's not because if your beingness is one where you know, you will support everything. Um, and then the other thing <clears throat> which comes to mind is, is uh, there's a really fascinating conversation with givers and takers because the givers give and the takers take. And then the fascinating thing about all of this is like, well, you know, how do you set those boundaries? How do you, how do you know when, when not to support or not to be of service? Um, when is it right for you? And that's, that's a really tough thing because for me, it's been, uh, you know, it's, it's easier for me to give more because, uh, again, as I said earlier, then I, I do not have to work on myself. So, um, there's a, there's a whole component called Mr. Nice Guy syndrome. And it's like, yeah, like I'll, I'll keep giving, I'll keep giving. And then, and then I start building this resentment. You know when that's not re that's re reciprocated, and then I, I I go into more of like a, oh well then I, you know I should be, uh, I should be conservative with what I give, and I feel like the answer is yes and no. The answer is like well, one, you know having those conversations, having like figuring out like what is it that the other person really wants. You know like what do you want, and then. How can I support you in that? And and actually, part of that too is it's really asking for consent. It's like, do you want me to support you? Because if the answer is no, then I'm just giving to a point where they don't really care, they don't find value, and I'm I'm building resentment because I'm spending time and energy on this. So I I feel like there's definitely there's no victim in either side of this. Uh, the challenge with this is. Do I have the right tools and communication and understanding and groundedness and boundaries and ability to have that conversation, to pick up those nonverbal cues, to ask those questions which are uncomfortable, you know? And also part of that too is just to, as you said, be there. It's just like, just to listen. Oh, this conversation, I'm gonna, they wanna talk. They wanna get stuff off their chest. And then I, I enjoy this now. I really, really appreciate this. It's like, if I'm doing less talking and asking questions and like letting them go through stuff and seeing that spark of like, aha, like that brings me joy. I love that. Chris, what about you? So when we're talking about, is it a responsibility that we have to, to hold space for others or is it this gift that we choose to give? My short answer would be yes and no. Um, this is about conscious decision. Um, for me, obviously I, 
been standing on trying to make positive effects, positive outcomes, things of that nature. Um, it's, there's a lot of depth to this. Um, it requires, well, first it requires who the individual is in certain groups and certain hierarchies. It's not, it's non, it's almost non-existent. I can't, you know, I, I know you guys have seen this. You get these group of friends and you're like, they're supposed to be friends for how long? And they act like they don't know each other or more importantly, they ignore the cues, you know, which just blows my mind sometimes. Like, you know, you just sit there and you're like, how are you just ignoring that? You know, I mean, how are you doing that? And I think that we, as a society, if we spent a little more time focusing on those aspects, we can make the world a whole lot better place. You know, there can be more flow and less and less grind, you know, against, you know, against each other. Um, I'm committed to it. I mean, I really am to the point where sometimes it hurts. Um, but that's when you got to step. Sometimes you got, you were referencing Vinny. Sometimes you have to step back. Um, if I'm having a problem with it, I got to step back and figure out how to put it back into harmony, things of that nature. But I'm, you know, like I said, I'm fully committed to, like I said, you guys are my core group. Um, you guys have given me so much. I automatically want to give it back because I recognize that it's come to me and that there's a certain, and I know we, you mentioned the word obligation in, in your, your part, Vinny, earlier. I don't necessarily think sometimes obligation is a bad word. It can actually be a good word in the right context. Now, if you got somebody that's putting you on the, you know, it's like that whole, I, you know, there are people who have expectations of you, right? Because they know who you are and what you're about in your value system. And these people are praying. They're praying on that. And when I get that feeling is when I kind of tip, tend to withdraw a little bit and not like go into my shell or anything like that. That just means that you're not valuing what I'm bringing to the table, and by default, you're kind of saying, I don't deserve it. And depending on the situation, depending on who the person is, maybe we get a chance to have a conversation about that. Maybe we don't. Maybe it's just not meant to be. But the matter of fact, for me, if the opportunity comes that I, that I see an opening to have that conversation, just out of who I am and what I'm about and what, what I really, my end, end all be all goal is, then I'm going to at least attempt to have that conversation. If it works, great. If it doesn't, at the end of the day, I can say, well, I at least made an attempt. Chris, thanks for sharing that. So this kind of brings us to uh, final thoughts. So I want to wrap up where we are. And obviously, we didn't get a chance to dive deep into each one of the individual pillars. We'll be talking for hours uh, because there is so much that can be discussed. But I did really want to focus in on the two that, again, the study brought to the top as important because I think most times the average person would see it differently. So I thought that was a, a great value to bring that out. And the other pieces we'll revisit in other podcasts down the road. And the last piece I want to talk about from a final thought standpoint is this, uh, and I mentioned this earlier in the comment about um, asking for help. And this goes right back to what Vinny was just saying about that space of listening maybe asking some questions, but talking less and letting the other person express more. And I think that's kind of in that same vein, getting ourselves into that mind space of being uh, an enabler in a good way to allow people to open up to us, to actually actively be listening to what they're talking about, not for personal gain, not to solve, any of those things because it shows that you truly are engaged and that you do care. So from a final thought standpoint, for me, that is the one thing that I think is important that we can individually do, especially for that inner circle that we have is to be present, to be open, to be honest, obviously in any feedback that we might give but more importantly, to be receptive if they ask for help. And then the opposite side of that is, if you do need help in any ways, whether it's a big thing or a little thing, to 
reach out and ask for that help and ask for that support. Because as, as I said earlier, that is the key to continue to build that trust. And that is obviously the bedrock of the foundation that a lot of this is going to be built on. So that's my thoughts from a, a final thought standpoint on this. Uh, Vince, what about you? What, what would you like to share with our audience as we, we step away today? I think about uh, that conversation around Simon Sinek and that quote, and I think about what I want, which is those that understanding of, you know, how to be a good friend. And, mm-hmm. and I think about, you know, how I'm evolving into being a good friend and, and finding that value and, and listening, you know, I, I, I really feel like that listening and communication piece is, is the, the most the, the cornerstone to everything like that, mm-hmm. because growing up and uh, I just had a conversation, which is really fascinating about the masculine, and the feminine energy. The masculine energy is like solutions and get things done and whatnot. And then you, you know, as you start talking about relationships, it's like, oh, no, actually, your your partner, your spouse, you know, they just want to be heard and they just want you to be there. And I think about, you know, my own situation, how I've shown up in past conversations. And then it's just like, oh, I'm just doing all the talking. And I'm just imparting and sharing because I feel like I know better or whatever versus just like, no, you know, insert, you know, uh, wisdom in a very short way and, 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 and support others, et cetera. So I would say my final comments or thoughts are really centered around, you know, the work is there. Uh, we're doing it. We're all doing it. Uh, we are not attempting to do it. We're doing it. And, um, It's really fun. It's really fun. uh, And sometimes it can be a little scary. And I recognize when I'm falling back into that mindset or whatnot. And um, my ability to switch that mindset into like, okay, you know, I see it. I acknowledge it. uh, I take it. I put it on the shelf and say, you know, thank you for, you know, that's your ego. You know, thank you for keeping me safe and whole and secure or whatever it is that, that my ego said at the time. And um, yeah, we'll come back to it. No, it's not, it's not going anywhere. You're not, you're not resolving the solution for yourself or for the other person. Yeah. I appreciate you both. And we appreciate you. <laughs> Absolutely. Chris, what about you? Final thoughts? Okay. This is when I get to get a long winded for about a minute and a half, two minutes. So anyway, I got a couple of things that I've been really working on doing uh, that I are, are integral pieces in my day to day movement, moving and grooving, as I like to say. Um, there's two things that I like to do. Uh, I do a self what they call a self-reflection exercise. And out of those self-reflection exercise, you have to you ask yourself a, a series of, of questions. Uh, one of those questions being, am I fueling my body with nourishing food that makes me feel good? Because this is a part of it. How often do I take the time to 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 quiet my mind and de-stress? Do I feel like I'm connected to something greater, which we talked about? Um, it's a spiritual practice, nature, or personal in your personal belief system. And am I striking a healthy harmony between my work, my personal time, and my rest? And to expound that a little bit further, um, I do this almost daily, and you do it as you see fit. It's just to do a regular self check-in with myself. I know you guys have heard me mention that I have conversations with myself out of those conversations. So basically I schedule some time to do the check-ins. How am I, you know, the biggest question at all is, is how am I feeling physically, mentally, and emotional? Where, 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 where are the areas of improvement? Because there's always areas of improvement. What small adjustments can I make in the coming days and weeks? to make me feel more aligned with my goals and missions in life. Um, And I want to say this, having a commitment to consistency and not perfection, which is, I think is huge out of all of that. You know, that is really a conscious decision that you've got to really latch on to because it's so easy to go into the negative. 
and with that, um, achieving, understanding that achieving harmony is not about getting everything right, but it's about making conscious choices every day that bring you closer to the, to the harmony and balance that you seek in your life. And remembering, lastly, that it's a journey. So be kind to yourself and take it one step at a time. Amen to all that. Yeah, 100%. It is a journey. Uh, and uh, that, that's the most important value of it is it's, it's an ongoing journey. And the landscape changes as you go because uh, life happens, right? So as you said, the, we make a plan, stick to it as best you can. But there are going to be some lefts and some rights that you didn't expect or see coming. Uh, and that's where that resiliency piece comes in, as Vince talked about earlier. And uh, what I mentioned that word uh, earlier is adaptability, learning to be adaptable and to be flexible, uh, not losing, keeping your eye on the ultimate goal and the target you're trying to get to. Your path might have to change, just like the GPS in a car. Sometimes there's construction or the roads close, the, the water main break. All these things happen as you're driving along. So you might not be able to go the normal route that you had planned but the objective is to reach the destination. Uh, and that's, that's what we want to stay focused to. So gentlemen, I appreciate both of you, as you know, and uh, thank you for the time today. And that's been excellent, excellent information shared. I think a lot of great value for our audience. And uh, as I always say to everyone out there, take care and most importantly, uh, take care of each other. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye. Have now. a great day, everybody.